All right, thank you, Sam. Hello, Toledo people. Good to be here. And I am Neil, and I have a confession. I am a bureaucrat. <laughs> and I am a proud bureaucrat. What does that have to do with the picture we're looking at here? So what's going on? Looks pretty routine work a day. This happens to be in Toronto. That's neither here nor there. It could be any city. There's a lot of everyday stuff going on. There's people out shopping. There's a hardware store. Perfect, because you can't do a stock photo of a happy, healthy city without a hardware store. Mom and pop, let's say. There it is. And as a bureaucrat, what I do in my professional life makes a contribution to this photo. Oh, there it is right there. I have to keep looking that way. Um, I'm looking down. So you see what's going on here. There's a bus. There's a transit bus in that photo. And yes, I am a proud bureaucrat who happens to be a public transit administrator. It's great. It's movement. It facilitates. It really plays a key role in scenes like you're seeing here that are very happy. And all too often, this is how we think about it. Internally, as a bureaucrat, I can tell you a lot of what we do in our, I'm not 9 to 5, really 24-7 commitments, looks and feels a lot more like this. It's a constant fire to put out. There's always something wrong. And instead of kind of the happy scene and the things that we actually facilitate that really contribute to, uh, to a good civic life, this is kind of how we're led to think of ourselves. Um, I'm from Detroit, although I do work in Toledo too, which is great. And I did work for this organization, which happens to be the transit system, the Department of Transportation. And that is exactly how the organization referred to itself with this kind of Microsoft Word clip art logo. Uh, and we'll, we'll go a little more into this here. But that's how this really key, important civic asset was referring to itself, the Department of Transportation. And I guess I kind of took that for granted until I was eating tacos with my buddy Kyle one day, who had just moved into the city. He lived in DC. He had been used to taking transit. And he's like, you know, I actually took the bus downtown the other day. It was clean. It was on time. It actually got my to a good start. I didn't have to pay to park. I didn't have to, it wasn't a hassle. It was a lot easier than I thought. And I have trouble telling my coworkers about it and having them keep a straight face because your buses look like this. There's that logo, Department of Transportation. It's not happy. It doesn't look good. And as a proud bureaucrat, that didn't make me proud that that was Kyle's summary of what was actually a positive experience using our service, his service, the city's service, our neighbor's service, all of our service, but it looks like this. So I went to work, and li literally, I went to work the next day, uh, although I guess figuratively, I also went to work, and I kind of looked around the office for other proud bureaucrats because I'm not the only one. Not in Detroit, not in Toledo, not anywhere. There's a lot of people who really care about this stuff. And it so happened that we had an order of 20 new buses coming, 20 new New Flyer XD40 Excelsior buses. Fantastic. So I talked to the maintenance manager, who is one of my great collabs, one, one of my great co-conspirators, partners in crime, partners in proud bureaucracy. And I said, what can we do to deliver a nicer experience and actually have our customers, as I like to refer to them, enjoy the experience? So my coworker, also a proud bureaucrat, we came up with a couple things. We said, what if we start from the inside, make the interior a little brighter? So we looked at color swatches. We looked at things that said, how do we go to the seats and make sure that they're clean, that they don't hold dirt, that they don't get stains, but they still look okay. They don't look institutional. We made a couple other spec changes that actually took this public space that's frequently thought of like this, and we brightened it up just by using yellow grab bars rather than the ones that look a little more institutional. We spec'd a back window, so, so you actually have an experience to brighten up the ride. And when you're riding the bus, you don't even feel like you're riding the bus. You feel like you're embedded in the city, taking advantage of this really useful, really important, really valuable public service. So it's perhaps not the most, the most grandiose space you'll ever see, but at the very least, it's pleasant. So that was the inside. We also went to the outside. And we were able to kind of develop a new paint scheme that you see is pretty elaborate. There's a lot going on there. Tell you the truth, I was not super happy with how this came out. Any children of the 90s here? You know who this is? Alanis Morissette. So I have what I like to call, oh, sorry about that, my Alanis Morissette moment. I was pretty angry that this is what we came up with because when we went to the manufacturer, and we, we tested this. This was actually a vinyl wrap that we put on a few buses. And for the next order, we asked them, what would it take to put this on the buses? They said, are you kidding? That's such an elaborate, ridiculous paint scheme. It's going to cost another $30,000 to put that on a bus. And I was like, 
Dave Coulier, why are you treating me like this? I had my angry Alanis Morissette moment where I'm like, we got to do something about this. So 15 minutes on a, Saturday, on a Saturday morning, I went into my secret space and I kind of sketched a simpler version of the paint scheme. I said, can we do something that's not gaudy, but is still happy and is still bright and communicates a more positive experience? Yeah, it's a public service, but maybe it's kind of a hidden bureaucracy, as proud as we are, as proud as I am as a bureaucrat. Can we kind of make it less bureaucratic, less institutional looking, and happier looking? So I went in with my just anger about that paint scheme and the extra $30,000 a bus it would take to do it, just how elaborate it was. And in 15 minutes, I opened Adobe Illustrator and sketched this out. And it was pretty rewarding when it, you know, something makes the leap from an Illustrator drawing to an actual $430,000 piece of equipment like that. So that was pretty cool to get the new paint scheme on the buses permanently. That was a victory. But it wasn't enough of a victory, because even though we made it look nicer, we still had far too many people of my friends and neighbors and fellow Detroiters and visitors and residents and business owners, et cetera, aunts and uncles and sisters and brothers, and you got it, just not understanding how to use the transit system. And as a proud bureaucrat, when I saw these shrugs, even though they're kind of smirking, that didn't make me very proud. So I didn't just have to think like I didn't just have to think like a proud bureaucrat. I had to think like an entrepreneurial bureaucrat. And I'm going to ask you to come with me for a second. Oh no! I went two slides ahead and I ruined the surprise. That's okay. You'll get it. So um, come with me on a journey for a second. Imagine you're on a road trip. It's early in the morning. You got a thousand miles to drive. You're driving from Tucson to Dallas on one day. You got to get up early. It's dark out. Maybe even darker than that. But to get your day off to a start and to stay awake, you need some food. You need some fuel. You need something. You're in the middle of nowhere. You're in the desert. There's not a lot of options. What might you get? You already saw it because I made the mistake of going two slides ahead. But any ideas? <laughs> An Egg McMuffin. Here's something else you need to know about me. I don't much care for McDonald's. Nothing against them. I just don't particularly like the food there. and I don't go there that often. But in a situation like this, when I'm constrained with my options, but there's a clear need to do something about it, I need a product that I am aware of. I need a product that I know how to do it. And then once I've accomplished both of those things, I need to decide on it, and then maybe I even need to feel good about it. So we'll, we'll get to the transit system again, I promise. But let's ask those questions of the Egg McMuffin. I'll use myself as the example to start. I don't go to McDonald's a lot. Again, nothing against them. I just don't like it that much. But I'm aware of it. I know McDonald's. We all know McDonald's. I know how to do it. I know what's in an Egg McMuffin. I know. For better or for worse, I know how to order an Egg McMuffin, and I know how to appreciate an Egg McMuffin. And in that situation, I'm going to decide on it. Might not necessarily be my first choice, but it's my option. It's practical. I'm going to make the decision. Am I going to feel good about it? To be determined. But that McMuffin test, I thought about that, because I actually did take that road trip. And a couple of McMuffins later, I'm like, you know, the McMuffin test can really apply to a public service that's kind of shrouded in a lot of confusion. You remember our shrugging customers. You remember my buddy Kyle, who's like, the buses are just not much to look at, even if you can figure it out. Can we apply the McMuffin test to something like public transit? So what we came up with was something pretty simple to make the system more approachable, uh, to take the actual routes and services and present them in a way that's really easy to understand, really easy to digest. Maybe like a McMuffin, maybe not. But at least answers these questions. Can you be aware of it? Do you know how to do it when we're giving you the information that allows you to decide on it? And can you feel good about it? So we'll get to the can you feel good about it momentarily. So here's another proud bureaucrat moment. When I had to kind of think about the McMuffin test and applying it to a public service, I started looking around. I started looking for evidence of other proud bureaucrats and other public services that are probably easy to take for granted and say, you know, was there someone who really cared about this behind the scenes and cared enough to make something like throwing out your garbage in, in your, in your uh, containers, your curbside containers, Maybe even making that bring a smile to your face. So these are from Lexington, Kentucky, not far from here. 
And if you know anything about Lexington, there's, there's a horse culture there. They raise horses. It's a pretty cool place, and it's really embedded in the culture. So someone at the city, a proud bureaucrat, I dare say, spotted the opportunity to use these garbage pails as a platform for civic pride. Who likes throwing out their garbage? Anybody? No, but you got to do it. I'd say this passes the McMuffin test. You know how to do it and way down at the bottom, it actually brings you joy. You feel good about it. You throw your garbage out and you saw the horse logo and you're like, yeah, Lexington, horses, yeah. So even something as simple and everyday and forgettable and easy to overlook as throwing out your garbage, there is perhaps a proud bureaucrat, someone who cares about this public service behind bringing a little joy to that experience. And there's one other example I just kind of want to show, and I think this is kind of the opposite of, uh, of the Department of Transportation logo. This comes, from, this comes from Canada, Ontario, and you see that on pretty much everything. It's happy. It's not the best logo in the world. We can you know, talk about the merits of the font and how that looks kind of like a spa or whatever, but it's happy. And this doesn't lead you to overlook or misunderstand or even be ashamed of a public service. So I look at this and I get a little twinkle in my eye every time I see this if, in, if I'm in Ontario. I'm like, yeah, proud bureaucrats unite. We care about what we do because we're motivated by service. We do these things to facilitate whatever else people got going on in your private life, and your business life. Great, do it. Yes, private enterprise, your happy life, do it. We're here to facilitate. We're not here to get in your way. We're here to make it happy and a good experience and a positive experience. So when I see something like this, I'm like, yeah, this really gives me this really gives me reassurance that there are other proud bureaucrats out there. And I hope it kind of reminds those who pass it, like, you know, this is, this is a service, this is a public resource we're offering for you. Please take advantage of it and use it as an ingredient to do whatever it is that you do. And I land on this. You know, needless to say, when I use the phrase, phrases like proud bureaucrat and public sector entrepreneur, not everybody keeps a, keeps a straight face. And you know, even, even me myself, I'm like, well, all right, Neil, the buses came in, the paint scheme looks good. Who really cares? No one's going to consciously notice that. And when, when it really came full circle was I, was I was out and about doing my thing, engaging with the people, riding the transit system. And I came across a couple of people I know, one I don't. Um, but I came across two of our customers who were actually wearing these shirts showing the bus routes. I'm like, not only are they wearing shirts showing the public service that they use and they appreciate, but they're smiling. And to imagine that there's something we offered as a public service that, that these people would do voluntarily, I'll tell you the full story. It so happened that these two are traveling together. Christina, I don't know Christina's friend's name, uh, call him Nine Jefferson. They were wearing those shirts. They were going to some, I don't know what it was. Our friend O here, I was wearing that shirt. And I literally gave her the shirt off my back so they could pose for that photo. But to see that in the field kind of brought the whole thing together. Like, wow, there's an opportunity to project and present and develop a public service in such a way that it causes joy. And it makes people smile. And when I think about my, my friend Kyle and how he's, he, he just couldn't fathom um, why we had, why we, were, why we were presenting ourselves in such an outdated way, you know, as soon as I saw this, I'm like, I got to get Kyle a t-shirt, and I did. So, you know, it's, it's, it's gratifying to see that this has generated some smiles. So I, I encourage you to, uh, as, as Sam kind of noted, whatever you're out there doing in your day to day, even if it's just turning on Summit Street when you get out of here, or, you know, popping a quarter in a parking meter, or even paying a water bill, or something more civic like that. Look at those little things, because um, odds are there is a proud bureaucrat behind it. Thanks.